So the Dobfather culminated with us winning the league title, but the series is not quite over yet, as in this episode we're going to reveal the attributes of all of our players, as well as simulating five years into the future to see how both Dob and Nom ended up getting on. So what better place to start than having a look at yours truly? I've never been able to see my own attributes to see whether I'm developing as a manager or not. Well, now, not only have we turned the attributes back on, but we have the star ratings available. And it turns out I only ever made it to a two and a half star coach. I didn't even get to complete all of my coaching badges. So stingy were the board, which means I end the game with a Continental Sea license. But how was I on the coaching field? Well, level of discipline certainly looks good. Finding players for their poor training performance on a weekly basis probably helped with that. The motivating and the people management hit 14. The determination was only 11. The adaptability I don't think ever improved, despite the fact I spent the last six years living in Slovenia, many of which with a Mongolian assistant. It still lists Nom, by the way, as one of the personnel that I have a good relationship with, although we're just acquaintances now, whereas with Clem and Kunstel, we are still close. Looks like we still had a lot of potential to improve as a manager, but obviously finding out about me is not why we've come back for this episode. We want to have a look at the attributes of our players to see how good they truly were. So let's delve into that squad and find out who were our best players starting in goal, where for the first four seasons, we were playing Giga Firmishek. It turns out that physically... Well, he was no kind of goalkeeper at all, and mentally, well, he was fairly limited for the division that he was playing in, but in terms of his goalkeeping attributes, he looked far better than I think we gave him credit for. An aerial reach of 15, communication of 13, the same for the handling, and reflexes of 12, maybe. It's just that agility that was letting him down. But in seasons three and four, he was jostling for the number one shirt with Giga Masaric. And what were we thinking? Strength of one, balance of one, first touch of one. He was a barren wasteland of talent. So thank goodness young Alan came through when he did because he really does look like a good prospect. Into our defence now that was built for many seasons around Darko Mitrovic and, well, you can probably see why the pace is not so good. But look at that jumping reach of 16. The marking, the positioning, the decision making and the concentration. All good, although the aggression is a little low for a central defender, and the tackling could certainly have been higher. But we struggled for seasons to find a defensive partner for him until Martin Puchko, and my goodness, what a prospect he was. The heading is poor, the marking and positioning could do with some improvement, but he is two-footed. He looked like he was good with the jumping reach. In fact, physically, at 19 years old and room for development, he looked very good in all regards, but it's the tackling of 14, along with that bravery, that made him such a stalwart of our defence in our title-winning season. Elsewhere at the back, we had our full-backs, and we were a little reticent in playing Matthias Krishnich, but maybe we shouldn't have been. He's 28 years old now and looks fairly well-rounded. The determination is a little low, but everywhere else, bar the crossing... He looks like a pretty standard player. Maybe even the equal of our right-back, Timmy Zidane, who we had as an ever-present in our six seasons at the club, but doesn't look that much better than the players we had over on the left. The crossing is certainly better, which does beg the question why he didn't get more assists throughout his time with us. But physically, well, there are certainly some aspects there that are a little weak, even if defensively, he looks pretty strong. Into the midfield now, and let's start with the players that we inherited. Yaka Kasnic was a key man for us. Turns out his natural fitness was very poor, as his coach report indicated, but his passing wasn't that great either. As a player that likes to shoot from distance, thank goodness we trained that into him because his long shots were 14. Otherwise, he's not the most spectacular of midfielders. What about old Tristan Tegler on the right? Hmm. Well, I'd say probably likewise, the stamina, the strength, the jumping reach, the balance. Nothing to write home about. The bravery was suspect, 
The passing was okay. The vision was very strong. He scored a number of free kicks for us with free kick taking of eight. I guess you've got to credit him for that. And then over on the left, we of course had Simon Gregorine, who rotated between being a winger and a striker, and it looks like he could perform both of those roles pretty well. He was quick, pace and acceleration of 14, but the dribbling was also 14. What we didn't see enough of, perhaps, was that finishing of 14, coupled with that composure of 12. Maybe it was the off-the-ball movement that was only 9 that may have meant that he didn't score quite as many goals as we would have hoped for, although to be fair, in those early seasons, he was hitting double figures. But back to our own players now, and to our hot youth prospects, how good were the big three that we were able to develop of Kalcic, Ivacic and dirty Denis Valencic? Well, let's start with Kalcic in the midfield, and as it turns out, my goodness, he was an absolute absolute ripper certainly physically he could have been a little stronger the jumping reach the agility and the pace could all have done with a little improvement and had i been able to see those attributes i would have been able to work on them a little bit more fully but mentally he is good enough to be playing in one of europe's top leagues i would wager the aggression the bravery concentration decision making determination even the positioning and vision were all good he looks like a strong all-round midfielder. The first touch was 14, the marking was 13, as was the tackling, and the passing of 12, and long shots of 10, coupled with that free kick-taking of 10 and corners of 11, shows why he was such a key assist maker for us during the last couple of campaigns. The next, we head to Martin Ivacic, the deep-lying forward, and my goodness, we had another player on our hands. Natural fitness was high. The aggression, anticipation, decision-making, and determination were also superb. He liked to get around the pitch, didn't he, with teamwork of 15. But first touch of 14, finishing of 14, along with off-the-ball movement of 12 and composure of 12, makes it look like this was a striker who had a glittering career in front of him. But drumroll please, because this is the one we were all waiting for. Just how good a striker is Dirty Dennis Valencic? And the answer is, well, maybe not as good as we might have thought. Physically, he looks superb. He's a little quicker than I gave him credit for. And the jumping reach and strength are good. The teamwork and the vision not quite that high, but maybe his goal scoring was due to a couple of his other mental attributes. Off the ball movement of 15, along with composure of 14, meant that maybe he was quite an adept finisher. His finishing is 11. The first touch and the technique are pretty decent. And that dribbling of 16 meant that he could run at the opposition. He finishes his time under our tutelage with 65 goals in 145 appearances but he only scored 14 of those in his first three seasons, and he looks like going from strength to strength. Elsewhere in our squad, we had plenty of other youngsters we were hoping to develop over the next few seasons. Miran Filipovic, well, mentally, looks like he would have been a good defender. Otherwise, he had plenty of areas to improve. We also had Igor Zavru, who again... Looked like a player with plenty of potential. Physically was another one that we needed to do a bit of work with. But mentally, we were bringing through some players that looked pretty good. Marco Pesha was another striker we were looking to develop. Physically, maybe he's yet another who wasn't quite ready for first-team football. But that finishing of 14 certainly gave us something to work with. So we were certainly producing players with potential, but who would go on to have the best career? Well, to find out that, we'll need to go five years into the future. But before we do, a huge thank you to everybody that's found that join button beneath me and made your way to become channel members. And to everybody that supports me on a monthly basis via Patreon, your support is humbling. The other big thank you we want to give is to Stephen Mason, who for every video of Dobfather has found a Godfather quote to inspire me in this save. To all of you lovely supporters, a huge thank you. But now it's time to jump in the old time machine, head five years into the future, and to see if any of our stars went on to shine brightly. 
Well, let's start our tour of the future with how well Dob did during the five seasons after we were champions. In the very next campaign, it looks like they slumped to only finish seventh. And then in season two, since we walked away, they came flat bottom and were relegated. They did bounce back at the first attempt, tied at the top of the table on 61 points with Goritza. They triumphed on aggregate in a playoff with Mura. In their first season back, they finished a creditable sixth. But in the most recent campaign, they showed they are a club on the rise as they came fourth and qualified for Europe. They've been through some managers since we left, with no fewer than three full-time coaches, two of whom were sacked. Even Callum Hayes had to jump in for a 17-day stint in charge. But what of that traitor Nom, who, as it turns out, is now a Continental Pro license, managing Triglav with motivating and people management of 20? Well, it turns out that he was headhunted not once, but twice as he moved from Kershko to Ragashka and then on to Triglav where he guided them to the second division title, as well as winning second division manager of the year. But worry not, in his first season as a top flight manager, Nom managed to guide Triglav to 10th place and relegation. How do you like that for schadenfreude? But one of our young starlets who's still at Dob and who secured themselves a move to a big club, well, the first to leave was Mattia Kalcic, who joined Palmer for just £325,000. He's now 26 years old, has 14 caps for the national team, and looks like a superb midfielder. He's now making substitute appearances in Serie A for Parma, and looks like he's played a reasonable amount of football since he joined the club, although he's never managed to amass an average rating above a 7 since he left. Martin Ivacic was the next to leave for the best part of a million pounds, and he headed to Croatia and top-flight side Rijeka. He looks like he's had a reasonable career, but also... Looks like he's now a fabulous player, and one that seems to be playing regular European football. 31-year-old Jaka Kasnic headed off to Hungary. Darko Mitrovic is now playing in the United Arab Emirates. And young Martin Puchko has actually moved twice, first heading to Dinamo Zagreb before joining Bundesliga 2 side Ingolstadt, where it doesn't look like he's developed quite as well as I thought he might. In fact, it looks like all of our youngsters ended up leaving Dob with Dennis for Lenchich heading to Hungary when Dob were relegated to the second tier. He's been scoring goals in the Hungarian top flight following his £1 million move and he's picked up a sole cap for the national team. And joining him at the same club is Alan Seifer, who doesn't seem to be the first choice, but... At just 23 years old, he still has a decade or more of football ahead of him. But even five years into the future, some of our old dobbers are still at the club, including Miran Filipovic and Timmy Zidan. Even veterans such as Tristan Tegler are still at the club. Dobbs certainly seem to have used the transfer market to strengthen, and they are no longer the outsiders for the title every year. But since we left, there have been no further honours, with just a cup final appearance the season after we won the title to show for their five years since our reign ended. But whilst our time at Dob is now over, things on the channel move forward and we have an exciting new challenge ahead of us next where for the first time I'm going to be going live streaming three times a week on YouTube at Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 1pm UK time. You can join me for a couple of hours of chat and FM frivolity as we take on a new challenge, one that truly sounds impossible. You can join me this Friday at 1pm UK time, where we're going to be kicking off our adventure, and you are going to get to choose the club that we're managing.